Hello and welcome to Blockchain Gaming World with me, John Jordan. So I've done a few videos about Avagotchi. Um, I'm still really excited about it, so I'm going to do another one. <laughs> so uh, they just released this uh, presentation. So it's a kind of detailed white paper as well. Um, I think this presentation is probably a bit easier to um, uh, understand what's going on with it. So Ave Gotcha is a project from the team at Ave, which is a DeFi protocol. Um, uh, and we can see here it is a DeFi staked crypto collectible. So, so it is a mixture of DeFi, it is a mixture of NFTs, and it is a mixture of gaming. And more generally, I think, because so much value has been generated in these DeFi dApps, um, recently billions of dollars worth of value, um, they have now a big part to play in kind of uh, almost like a funding blockchain gaming, uh, particularly on Ethereum. And particularly because uh, games on Ethereum are having big problems because of high gas prices. So it's kind of a, uh, an interesting scenario that DeFi has created a problem for blockchain games on Ethereum because of these high gas prices, but now they have created a lot of value. And I think that value is going to flow back into blockchain games because games are great at creating community and engagement and retention. And those are the, the things that DeFi dApps uh, can't do very well. They, they, they deal with value very well, but they don't deal with other things, other softer issues, which are very important. Okay. So... Um, so uh, NFTs and DeFi are hot, apparently. Yeah, so DeFi market cap, um, depends how you measure these things now. Lock value, um, driven particularly by the increase in price of ETH, is now up to over $6 billion. DeFi users, 200,000. I mean, I think that's wrong. That's miles too high. Um, Aave has over half a, a billion dollars locked into it. Um, and it's saying the Aave return on investment is 2,000%. I don't know if that is, I presume that's for the Aave token. Um, there's an Aave token knocking around. Um, a number of sales of NFTs, uh, 4.8 million. Not, not quite sure where that's from. Probably about right. Average price, I mean, that's pretty meaningless because some are really expensive and some like CryptoKit is uh, like uh, less than a dollar. Uh, volume in USD, uh, 100 million. Probably about right. Um, year on year growth. Yeah, I mean, whatever. <laughs> so that's right. So can we combine them? Yes, yes, we can. We can definitely combine them. Um, right. So Aave Gotchas capture the value of both. Well, hopefully what they do is they... Um, they synergize the best of both of both sorts of projects, I think. Um, so, so it's more than capturing the value. It's, it's actually um, a synergetic, a synergenic, a synergenic process. Right. So uh, this is our Gotcha. What's interesting about it? So um, I guess we we'll get into more detail on this. But uh, when you create an Gotcha, it is backed with collateral stake. So in Aave, you have these A coins, uh, A tokens, and they're uh, interest bearing tokens. So that in fact, they're sort of like um, you take a you take a collateral like Dai or um, I don't know actually what they do in Aave, but uh, let's say Dai or, or another stable coin, um, USDC, Tether, or something like that, and you lock it into Aave and you get this A token, and it is kind of a wrapping around the original token, but it gets revenue coming in because because your original token is being lent out um, and, and gaining interest. So it's kind of interesting. You have a the value of the NFT is not um, based on the value you bought it for or the value you sold it for, which is the current situation, it has an absolute value. Because if you want to, if you create a, an Aave gotcha with a value of um, $100, um, then uh, at some point, because it's a stable coin, that's not going to go down. It's going to gain some interest as well. And at some point, someone could someone could burn that Aave gotcha, effectively destroy it and release the value. So it always be should always be worth $100. These uh, Aave gotchas um, have... Uh, they're kind of composable um, NFTs, which just means you can add things to them. So this one here, you can see, has got a jewel on it. Um, I think that's it. I don't think that's the original. Um, I don't think that's part of the original artwork. But it also has this weird um, visor thing, so you can add things to them. Random traits, so a bit of a bit of kind of a crypto kitties coming on here that they have these random traits, and also a, ra a rarity level, which we expect in in, um, in NFTs, I guess. Okay, so how's it going to work? So, as with all these things, it gets a bit expen it gets expensive. It may get expensive. It gets a bit complicated. So, <laughs> there is this new token you need, which is the uh, Dollar Ghost token. So, this is the Ghost token. This is this is the uh, kind of the, the native token to Aave Gotcha. Um, and you need the Ghost uh, token. You spend that to get a portal, which is how you create an Aave Gotcha. So, you need this Ghost token, and you need some A tokens. This is what we've said before. You need to have some collateral in Aave. Uh, if you, as soon as you do that, you create eight to eight tokens in your wallet, and basically you take your eight, you use your ghost token to uh, create the portal. You then stake some collateral, you know, whatever one dollar, hundred dollars, um, into your Ave Gotcha, and then your Ave Gotcha here, he's got a um, or he, it, whatever he, she um, has a sword and a sword and a shield um, as extra NFTs, and you can go 
you can train them up. But obviously, with um, the whole point of Tamagotchis, which you have to feed them and, and, and stop them getting bored and, and uh, make them go to sleep, that sort of stuff. Um, you can vote with them. So so they are a sort of governance token to some degree. And obviously, you can play games with them. That's kind of the point. OK, so uh, Vitalik um, doesn't like a lot of what's going on with DeFi at the moment, but he likes these um, these uh, uh, organizations, these decentralized autonomous organizations, which effectively is what this DAIOC is. So this is um, an ICO based around a decentralized organization. Um, so Arve Gauthier is going to is, is using Aragon, which is kind of well known as as a kind of platform for creating autonomous um, decentralized autonomous organizations. Sorry, too many words. Okay. So um, you spend. So you're spending these coins to get portals and wearables and consumables and parcels. Don't know if that land probably. Not sure. Uh, and then we then you're earning through competitions, governance, and rarity. So so. They're creating this new token. This is what is going to be interesting to see the value of. Um, as with all DeFi stuff, they're very focused on tokens, <laughs> which is interesting because because games have generally, certainly on Ethereum, have been generally focused on NFTs, not tokens. Tokens have a lot of issues around them. Obviously, the price of tokens goes up, up and down. Fantastic when tokens are bombing up, but what happens when your token when your token market or your token price crashes? We will see. <laughs> the interesting thing, I guess, about DeFi linking DeFi and um, games is the DeFi people have a better idea of, of how to deal with tokens and token pricing and how to deal with those economies. Um, games companies just don't have the experience of doing that at any scale. At least. So going with NFT has gone before. So we have some um, typical sort of sort of a uh, presentation thing where, where your product's brilliant and everything else is rubbish. <laughs> so we'll see. Um, so uh, uh, so here's the other gotcha. Tick 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 tick. Uh, Crypto Kitty is bullet. Uh, Bullionix, which is a gold-backed um, system, so you can create NFTs back with a gold coin and avatars, um, an avatar kind of creation thing. So um, provably scarce, scarce. Well, that's what we get with blockchains. Competitive gaming, crypto kitties, really? Don't think so. Value-backed NFTs this is what you get with this gold-backed um, system um, that they have an, an outside uh, value that um, gives them value, um, a kind of floor value. On-chain metadata, um, rarity farming. <laughs> DAO governance metaverse. So, um, yeah, okay. So, what's going to happen? What's the timing? So, we're currently uh, mid August 2020. So, uh, Q3, get, get my, so Q3 started, is it? Yes, it has. So, Q3 has started uh, August, November, no, <laughs> excuse me, um, August, September, July, August, September. Yeah, we're halfway through Q3. Um, and then Q4 is October, November, December. Yeah, okay. So, we're having Ghost Distribution and Ave Gotcha. DAO version one launches, so that's going to happen. Supposedly, uh, I think it is that is supposed to be starting end of end of August, um, but they got till the end of September. Um, early Q4, so October, the Ave Gotcha testnet launches late 2000, uh, late Q4 um, 2020, so December we imagine. Ave Gotcha mainnet and Ave Gotcha DAO two launches, and then uh, Q1 next year uh, we have Rarity Farming begins and the Realm launches. So this is this idea of, of the metaverse. So who are the people behind this? Um, I have no idea who any of these people are. So, but there we go. You can go find them on Twitter. Um, and uh, here are some uh, advisors. No idea who they are either, but they've got a legal guy. So that's good. Um, right. So apparently cutting edge token distribution. So token distribution is a big hot issue in, in DeFi at the moment where um, people have lots of ideas about whether uh, distribution is being done in a orderly and in a, um, okay, I guess, equitable manner um, or whether um, people uh, who are Kind of creating and funding these projects get get uh, get more than than just people who are kind of actually the community helping it. So what we've got here. So actually, um, private sales. So we're saying pre bonding curve, um, fixed supply seven point five million, and five million of that is going to go to a private sale. So basically, all the all the rich crypto investors and VCs are going to get in this first, um, and they're going to get um, the majority of the tokens. Boo hiss. Ecosystem. So a million tokens are saved for ecosystem. That means getting developers to support this sort of stuff and build systems around it. Um, 800,000 go to the team. Well, that's fair enough. They're, they're doing, they're building the thing. Um, half a million go to the pre-sale. Um, again, that might be uh, quite, we don't know how they're working that out. Um, and then the advisors get some as well. So so um, I'm not sure this is really cutting edge token distribution. Um, I guess what they're saying here is, um, so um, all tokens will be locked and vested according to the schedule. So, so this these these um these tokens are going to they're kind of just going to flow out into the market so we'll look to see how they how they vest 
once these things go live, they're saying there's an unlimited supply. Okay, so there's a fixed supply. So before the bonding curve, the bonding curve is is um, how this how um, supply and and demand, um, or how supply and price work. Um, but before that happens, um, seven point five million is basically go to all the people behind it. Uh, as the supply of ghost increases, the price increases according to a mathematical function. So as they pump more of this ghost token into the, uh, as they create more mint it, um, the price is going to go up. Okay, um, fair enough, I suppose. Uh, what happens next? Um, so a tri-phase distribution. Token distribution will happen in three phases. So we have the private round, the pre-sale, and the token bonding curve. So, so none of us, unless we are high net worth individuals, are going to get involved in phase one or phase two, I shouldn't think. Um, so basically, when it goes live for, for common or garden, people who have MetaMask, that's going to be phase three. Um, so it's going to launch at uh, five cents to a ghost token. So 0 0.05 die, die is one dollar. Um, and if you and you're vested, um, OK, vesting period is, is a year. Um, so you can't do anything for half a year uh, and then you can release 50 percent. And then you can drip release into the next half. So basically, if you if you get involved in the first uh, in in the pre-sale, or, or uh, you can't do anything for 180 days, so that just stops people dumping the market and dumping the price. Uh, similar thing for the pre-sale, uh, but this is now obviously getting more expensive. Well, not obviously, but this is generally what happens. So now you're paying 10 cents um, for a ghost token, so double the price of the people who do the private sale. Obviously, this is to incentivize pe people to get involved in the, as early as possible because they they get the things cheaper. Um, and then the bonding curve will continue to distribute ghost tokens. Right, so this is, okay, so what they're doing here is um, uh, for Commonwealth Garden people like me and you, uh, they're going to, uh, supply is unlimited, so they're going to pump as much of this as possible. It's not going to be like a 21 million uh, Bitcoin hard cap, anything like that. It's going to start priced at uh, 0 0.2, so 20 cents. Um, as the uh, supply increases, so I guess as more people are using these, uh, tokens and and, and uh, it's kind of unclear how they how you create them interesting um so we don't quite know how they how you can create them but as, as supply increases the price will go up and if the supply goes down then the price will go down so this is some idea of elasticity uh so supply drives price which we've kind of seen things like ample um which is a kind of a, 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 a kind of innovative token that's launched um, and you can claim them from the bonding curve immediately. So a bonding curve is just what happens with, with something like Uniswap, how, how, how basically it's also automatic market maker. So you just buy and sell into that. And you can claim, tokens can be claimed immediately from, from curve. Is that the assume bonding curve? Or I assume that's not the, the DAP curve. That would be confusing. Okay, um, there is a, a million ghosts in the summoners fund for core team. Are oh, we going through all this again, are we? Um, okay, so the core team, they're locked up for 180 days and then... Um, thousand and ninety five days okay ecosystem fund that's locked as well so we're going through all this okay and now who, who are they looking to um uh, uh attract nft nerds i mean I'm, i don't consider myself an nft nerd um DeFi degens i mean that's not a particularly nice phrase so this is the, they're all the people who are pumping this token and Taoists. um yeah I, I, that, I don't think that's a very good <laughs> i think that's a very good slide it's a meme i suppose um but that, that that doesn't strike me that you're building a very good community that looks like you're just trying to pump it um hey ho we will see what happens i mean i'm, I'm very excited about this um because i do think it, it is interesting in terms of what it does with nfts obviously we have no idea what the game kind of side of things is which is kind of really what matters otherwise you're just wrapping the kind of you know you're you're kind of wrapping a game um kind of a white paper on, on on what is effectively a DeFi pump um, uh, token thing, which we've already seen plenty of. We don't need to see any more of that. Um, so hopefully this is quite, kind of serious when it comes to the games. I guess that to me, that'll be the, um, that would be the uh, sticking point really um, is it's going to be fun to launch, launch and create these NFTs, but it's just going to be a big bubble. And particularly because you have the NFTs and the token, the token's going to pump. If that really pumps up, then that, 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 does that mean actually you can't create the NFTs because they're too expensive to buy the tokens in order to do it? All that sort of stuff is, um, is you know, the, that kind of stuff is significant. Uh, and, and obviously, the more complex you make these um, uh, products, then and more the, the less control you have, <laughs> um, then then the more problematic uh, it can it can become. Um, and obviously, that's that's not really how we drive games. So I still think this will probably be quite niche. Um, could be famous last words. I don't think many many um, 
non-blockchain, non-crypto people are going to get involved in this because it's just so too complicated to do. Um, but uh, if it does do well, then I guess we'll see more of this. And more generally, I, I do think any DeFi uh, developer is going to be should be talking to game developers and thinking about how they can link into this stuff. And we see this already. Make a DAO um, is sticking DAO into lots of games and supporting games in different ways. Um, and I think there's lots of interesting options, particularly around land. Uh, and I think it, NFT value um, as well is, is, a, is an interesting one. I think we'll definitely see more of that happening as well. So anyway, thanks for um, listening. This is a pretty long one. I'm pretty excited actually about uh, 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 Avagotchi. So that's why I keep banging on about it. Um, obviously, no investment advice. <laughs> but I just think it's a cool concept. So uh, thanks for watching the video. Please do subscribe to Blockchain Gaming World, where we spend our time uh, making videos about blockchain games and everything that's going on there. Uh, but thanks for watching this one and hope to see you again soon.